Hi, I'm Donald Sinclair. I'm a science teacher with Great Hall and the Tutors, and today we're going to be looking at a few topics in chemistry. This is a guide to different types of chemical bonding. Ionic bonding is the bonding found between metals and non-metals. If we look at a diagram of a metal and non-metal, we can see why. Sodium has 11 protons in its nucleus and 11 electrons orbiting it. This means it has an overall charge of zero. Chlorine similarly has 17 protons and 17 electrons. Now atoms are generally more stable when they have a full outer electron shell. The easiest way for sodium to gain a full outer electron shell is to lose the one electron it has in its outer layer. This is because it's a metal. It's found on the left of the periodic table, which means it has one Metals generally have one, two or three electrons in their outer shell. Non-metals like chlorine, however, are on the right-hand side of the periodic table. This means that the easiest way for them to gain a full outer electron shell is to gain one, two or three electrons. Chlorine, for example, has 17 photons and 17 electrons. If it was to gain just one more electron, it would have a stable full outer shell. So when sodium and chlorine react, they can do a sort of trade. If the sodium loses one electron and the chlorine gains that electron, both atoms now are more stable, they have full outer electron shells. However, because sodium has lost an electron, it now has more protons and electrons, so it has an overall charge of plus one. Chlorine similarly has gained an electron, so it's gained a negative charge, and so it now has an overall charge of minus, because it has more electrons than protons. Positive charges are attracted to negative charges and vice versa. This means that the sodium and the chlorine atoms, or ions as they are now because they've gained a charge, will bond together to form a very strong bond. Covalent bonding is another way of an atom gaining a full outer stable electron shell. It occurs between non-metals and non-metals, unlike ionic bonding. Let's look at an example. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight. That means it has eight electrons orbiting it. I've omitted the inner shell here because that takes no part in chemical reactions. So we can see the six remaining electrons in the outer shell. It needs to gain two more to complete that shell. Similarly, hydrogen, the first element, has an atomic number of one. It has one electron in its shell. It needs to gain one more and it will be, have a full outer electron shell. Normally, of course, hydrogen is diatomic, so normally these two hydrogen atoms will be bonded together, but just for simplicity, I've separated them into individual atoms. By bonding with the oxygen atom, each of the three atoms can gain their full outer electron shell. In essence, they share the electrons between the three of them. Oxygen now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, a full outer shell and each of the hydrogens has two electrons, a full outer shell. Covalent bonding tends to form small discrete molecules, for example H2O or methane which is CH4, and these molecules are separate and can float around on their own. That's why a lot of covalent substances tend to be liquids or gases, as opposed to ionic substances like sodium chloride which form large, gigantic molecules uh, in a very crystalline uh, well-ordered lattice. Metals such as iron, gold, silver have their own particular type of bonding. Metals have layers of positive ions one over the other and surrounding these positive ions is a sea of free electrons which are free to move. This explains why metals are such good conductors of electricity because the electrons are not tightly bound to any specific ion, to any specific nucleus, they are free to move in the presence of an electric field. This also explains why metals are so ductile, why they're so malleable, why you can shape them with enough pressure. Because the ions are very tightly bound, but not to any one specific other ion, if a force is applied, for example, here, one layer can slide over the layer below one place and still be strongly bound there, but moved relatively easily. This explains why metals are good conductors of electricity and also why they're so malleable. 